Welcome to Watch Trading with Tire Review, presented by Apex 2022. I'm Maddie Weiner, and today on the podcast, I wanted to bring you an interview I did with Tire Industry Association CEO Dick Gust. We caught up at the 2022 OTR conference in February. Take a look. So, uh, talking about labor um, right. in the industry, um, you know, there was talk here, obviously, about you know making training paramount. In, in you know, you have a lot of business coming in. A tire dealer might have a lot of business coming in, and it's great for the business, high demand, but you don't want to you know leave that new employee. So you kind of have to balance that, well, right? You know, you obviously were listening to yesterday at the sessions because one of the focuses that we really have is that, you know, it's very difficult when a cons uh, customer comes into your shop yeah. and he wants the car fixed as quickly as possible. Yeah, right away. So you're trying to get uh, people in the back shop to work and come to work because there are shortages. I mean, you probably heard that, you know, several tire dealers had to close some shops for a period of time because they didn't have enough people. Yeah, right. Well, the temptation is always then to have the people come in and you kind of throw them into the workplace. And uh, in, in this business where safety is paramount, uh, you have to really overcome that temptation and make sure that that person you're putting in that technical area is trained properly. Because right. it's the safety that you have to deal with. When, when the customer leaves your shop, it has to be the safest condition possible. Not just for the customer also, but because your employee who's doing the work has to know how to properly, you know, look at that tire and make sure it's mounted properly, the right, right. amount of air pressure, the amount of, you know, tightening the lug nuts, make sure yeah. you the right pressure. And so there's a lot that goes in that most people don't realize, you know, it's just not about putting a tire on a wheel. Right. There's a lot of technical training that goes into that to make sure everybody's safe. Yeah, and I know Tia's been doing a lot of um, mm -hmm. different training efforts around different different <laughs> positions in the shop. And, mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, right. So, definitely. You know, and, and along with the safety element, I mean, it's not safety, but we're training now uh, retail. Yeah. People, uh, in retail management so that they can come into the shop. And that all ties in, I think, with from the retail management side of the business back to the technical side of the business. Yeah. We're training uh, people to put, uh, you know, proper maintenance in. So all of that comes together. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very interesting and crazy mm -hmm. time in the industry. But, yeah, it is. You know, it's an exciting time and, you know, it requires a lot of people to make sure they do it right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. We're working with them on that to make sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Well, mm -hmm. Dick, one other thing I wanted to discuss mm -hmm. with you, um, obviously you came from Liberty Tire Recycling um, right. into your current role. Right. And um, tire recycling was one of the sessions that, um, or, you know, end of life tires mm -hmm. um, for OTR was one of the sessions that was, um, that happened yesterday at the conference. And um, I was shocked to hear that, you know, sometimes in these mining sites, tires mm -hmm. are buried, like, you know. It's sad. Yeah. When you really think about it. Um, and, you know, I think I, I always said when we were, I was in the recycling business that the off the road tires are the new frontier of recycling. Yeah. Because sure. they have not been uh, really considered. They're so massive. The equipment wasn't necessarily in place to handle them. You had to handle the tires many times in order to get it small enough in size to pass it through a shredder. But, uh, you know, we were really fortunate yesterday because we heard from Deborah Hamlin from Birch Stone and Leanne right. Stewart from Cal Tire and John Sheeran from the U.S. Tire Manufacturers Association. And all three of them talked about the need to make sure that that raw material going into a scrap OTR tire is used. Yeah. It's extremely valuable. Right. And it's really sad when you think of that material going into the ground. And um, I thought it was extremely interesting to see what Chile is doing from that perspective. I mean, Cal Tire is working extensively yeah. to help the people in the mines in Chile to convert those tires into, when you when you looked at the paralysis that they were doing with those tires and you, you so, saw that, the, you know, the crumb rubber coming out of one side, the carbon black coming out, you saw the steel coming back and you had a jar of oil. I mean, it was a really great visual that I think attracted a lot of attention. So, yeah. yeah um, OTR tires are, you know, in in much need of better management at the end of their life. And I think you're going to start to see that coming. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious from your perspective, like, what, what do you feel are some of the steps, at least like U.S. Um, tire or you know U.S. tire dealers can can take in working with their customers and, and you know. Um, 
I guess, really emphasizing the importance of recycling these tires and making sure that they're participating in, you know, um, getting these tires to a, a healthy, sustainable, you know, end of life, kind of creating that or, you know, contributing to the circular economy like they were talking yeah. about yesterday. I think that you, you can talk about passenger light truck and truck tires and you can separate off the road tires, but yeah. I think we've done a pretty decent job. We can certainly do better with passenger light truck and truck. Um, there are mechanisms in place. You mentioned Liberty Tire Recycling. It's a national collection program now where we work very closely I said we because I still feel I'm not too far <laughs> away from that. But uh, work very closely with a lot of the tire dealers to make sure the tires are managed properly. And that's what makes Liberty valuable to those tire dealers yep, and also yep. the manufacturers. Um, the uh, programs that a lot of the manufacturers are looking at, they put Bridgestone and Michelin right now that I'm familiar with. And I think Goodyear probably is too, I'm just not that familiar with them. Mm -hmm. But um, they're looking for sustainability. Um, they have a, a, a real interest in ESG program that is coming out of your environmental societal governance. Right. And that aspect is bringing them around to looking at the end of, not only end of life tire, but then how can they manage that material that they're coming with in the end of life. Yeah. And so, um, you know, they're putting uh, recycled carbon block in the new tires to some extent. They're using from rubber in the maybe that material comp composition of some of the treads. Right, yeah. And, you know, yeah. when they're leading the way like that, but there's so many more things that could be done. Uh, I've been a proponent of rubber modified asphalt for a long time mm -hmm. because that would solve basically the whole problem of marketing the material. And it's a product that makes a much better road than normal asphalt. It will last longer, doesn't need much repair, and it's very cost effective. So uh, one of the places that we are really devoting time uh, out in Washington now is to talk to the federal government, particularly with the infrastructure bill, mm -hmm. to make sure they are aware of what we can do with rubber modified asphalt because it's a win-win. Right. We're talking about recycling a material that has been a problem in the past into a product that's a lot better than the most the product today. Right. And right. then that that rubber modified asphalt can be recycled again. So it just keeps going. Yeah. And that, that's the true definition of sustainability. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's uh Contributing to that circular economy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. The off the road tires are going to be a little bit more challenging. Um, I think what's going to happen is the mines are going to have to look at sustainability themselves. And I think you're going to see more manufacturers stepping in to devote time, like Cal Tire, a huge right. dealer of OTR tires. They've invested a lot of, a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. in making that equipment work in Chile. Right. And we've got another couple of places. I saw Leanne, you know, put a slide up where they're doing some things up in Canada. Right, right. So I think that that's going to be the way and the avenue OTR is going to take mm -hmm. to get those tires recycled also. And it's going to be those big distributors like Caltire. That's really interesting. And um, the, the one other question that I wanted to ask you, is there any um, for, you know, especially OTR dealers that right. are looking for more information about tire recycling and ways they can, you know, be more sustainable in their businesses, mm -hmm. help their customers be more sustainable. Does TIA have any resources um, well, that you can point to? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, um, okay. the reality is that uh, we we're really fortunate this year that Mason Hess is the president of the Tire Industry Association. He works literally is out in mines frequently out in Arizona working with Purcell Tire. Yeah. So, I um, mean, he can kind of lead the way. But in terms of TIA resources, we have a lot of resources. If tire dealers want to learn more about the recycling of OTR tires, what they can do in certain parts of the country, who is doing work with them today, um, we have a wealth of information along those lines. They can get onto our website or they can actually call me. You know, I'd be, <laughs> yeah. happy, I'd be happy to talk to them about it. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. We're there to help. Yes, absolutely. No, that's great to hear. Well, yep. Dick, I appreciate your time. Um, thank you so much for sitting down with me today and uh, looking forward to the rest of the conference, that's for sure. Well, it'll be a good one, Maddie. Thank you. I appreciate it.